The views expressed on the following broadcast do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. And now, here are your co-hosts, Sandy W., Stephanie H., and the Monty Man. That's right. You want to hear that again? Here we go. Okay. One more time. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome aboard, everybody. Welcome to the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show. This is the great reality. Sandy is here. Stephanie is here. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Bruce is not here. No, he's not. All right. So Bruce has been misbehaving. He had himself a mild heart attack a couple of days ago. So those of you out there, please pray for him. Uh, he he is, as of last night, he was still in ICU. They weren't moving him because he was having severe headaches and he was asleep. So they didn't want to bother him. Um because, you know, when you're having the headaches like that, you can fall asleep. It's a good thing. And so I went up to see him, and I didn't want to wake him. And then this morning he called me, and he said he, he thinks they're going to send him home today. Oh, that's good. The thing about Bruce, Bruce, I mean, you know, if the average Joe has a mild heart attack, I mean, it's it's not anything to to balk at, but but mild is mild. For Bruce, mild isn't mild. You know, he's had several open heart surgeries, you know, he's he's had difficulties and so this is how unselfish this guy is. When I prayed for him over the phone, his prayer was that you know, he's like he's like I'm ready to go. I mean, you know, and I I don't know anybody more ready to go than than this guy. I mean, you know, he's got all his ducks in a row. I mean, he he loves the Lord and but he said my main concern is that God gives me the strength to be able to glorify him in the time I have left. That's all I want to do. And I'm like, man. That's unselfish. You know, I mean, I'm like, I still want to jump out of a plane. I still want to <laughs> climb Mount Everest. I mean, all things I will never be able to do. But it, you know what I'm saying? It's me, me, me. Yeah. Wow. So that that's that's really awesome. So I thought we'd just take just a second and say a prayer for Bruce. All right. Let's, let's do. Heavenly Father, thank you for your servant Bruce. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when it's time for you to greet him in heaven, it's going to be well done, good and faithful servant. And so we just lift our brother Bruce up to you. We ask the Lord uh, to, to to help him heal quickly so he can get out of the hospital today, uh, Lord. But we know that Bruce's desire of his heart is whatever your desire is. And that just blows my mind. Help us to be more like that. Lord, all he asks is that if you're giving him more time, that you give him the strength so he can better do your will and be of maximum service to you and his fellow man. So we're asking that for him today. And uh, hopefully we'll see him here next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So uh, the topic this week is why do we love to hate the holidays? Um, this is about as common as a, uh, as a topic of discussion amongst 12-steppers um, as gratitude is around Thanksgiving. Uh, and, and we hear a lot of people, you know, whine, complain, boo-hoo that the holidays are here and they hate the, the, uh, the commercialization of Christmas. Uh, I say whine, complain, and boo-hoo about that. Um, because that's a different level than experiencing pain because uh, during the holidays because of loss or, or grief or whatever. Look at if you're complaining about the commercialization of you know the holidays, as I have in the past, let your heart not be troubled. The only difference between the the mall today and the mall any other time of the year is there is music and lights. And the prices have been slashed. What are you whining about? <laughs> My goodness. Um, but I, I get it. I, you know, I, and I think we like to complain. You know, people that people that are resentful, they're resentful all day long. I, I, you know what I mean? There's some people that just it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you know, I love this time of year. 
Um, I, I just do. And, and, and one of the reasons I do is because uh, for the Christian, it is the celebration of the one we celebrate the most. You know, I was lost and now I'm found. I mean, I was an enemy of God and he loved me anyway. And I'm like, this is just, I mean, I know it's not calendar accurate that this was Christ's birthday coming up. Um, and actually, I think it was December 5th that St. Nicholas, the real St. Nicholas was was born. Um, not Santa, St. Nicholas, who was a bishop who was persecuted for his faith. Um, but I don't know. I just, I just look at it as a, as a cause for celebrating. It's not my birthday, right? And it's, it's <laughs> Jesus birthday. I, I, you know, um, but I, but I will receive gifts. Any of you listening, if you'd like to say, <laughs> say my name. I know. <laughs> so our topic is why do we love to hate the holidays? Uh, and we're going to be talking uh, about that, but I thought here's something interesting. Um, do you, have you guys, did, did you ever see the movie? Limitless. It's with the guy that played the sniper in um, American Sniper. Oh, I can't think Wesley. Of oh, what's his name? The listeners I think are. I did they, they know his it. name. It's just Wesley something. Um, uh, at, no, Cooper. Cooper. Uh, Wesley Cooper. Uh, uh, um, oh gosh. Did it have some kind of drug on it? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, yes, Limitless did. was about a pill. Right. That you could take and and it would make you so intelligent. You know, we only use a portion of our brain. It would utilize your entire brain. So he was able to calculate, like if he was going to cross the street, he was able to, in New York traffic, he could calculate before he crossed all the geometric angles and everything so he could get across, you know, within an instant, things like that. Well, they made a series out of it. And it's on TV right now called Limitless. And... um. And, and it's, it's pretty. It's pretty good, actually. Well, check this out. Uh, experts say most people only use ten percent of their brain's potential. What if there was a pill that could unlock your other ninety percent? Clinical trials have shown that the ingredients in this pill can boost your brain power, sharpen your mind, and skyrocket your energy levels. Welcome to the future. The use of a legal um, legal study drug known as Adarum. Not to be accused with Adderall, Adderum has skyrocketed on college campuses across the U.S. Silicon Valley, Wall Street, and professional athletes since coming back on the market in April. It's being touted as an Adderall replacement, and many students are taking full advantage of its availability to buy online without a prescription. There has been much controversy around the memory enhancing pill, not only on college campuses, but also in the media. It first came into the spotlight when the movie Limitless became a box office hit and several blogs started comparing it to to Adderam, the the movie to Adderam. Sales of Adderam tripled overnight as students, athletes, entrepreneurs, and business executives all wanted to get their hands on this powerful brain enhancer. And we all want to enhance our brains, right? Oh, yeah. What the heck, you know? Um, Adderam, which has no recorded side effects in any clinical trials, unlike the pill in the movie which had terrible side effects, was soon the target of critics who claimed it was too powerful to be sold without a prescription. Other people in academic circles insisted that Adirond provided an artificial edge for its users and was unfair to those who weren't taking it. This led to being banned from quiz shows at many top universities as well. Facing outside pressure, the creators of Adirond were eventually forced to halt production of the pill. Well, after three years of legislation and clinical studies showing its safety, the online ban was finally lifted, and the creators of Adderam were allowed to resume selling their uh, selling from their website, which I am not going to give you the address. <laughs> <clears throat> its reappearance has thrilled users around the world, people who uh, generally suffered during its absence. Quote, my ability to think and focus more than doubled when I was able to buy Adderam again. The pill's return prevented me from dropping out of college, uh, a student told us. Uh, so with so much praise from the media and countless reviews from people experiencing success from Adirum, we at Secret Brain uh, wanted to, it's an organization, wanted to verify whether this was all hype. Uh, practically everyone in our building volunteered to test it out, but we chose our health and science editor, Warren Carter, below is the account of using Adirum over a four-week period. Now check this out. This is all leading up to my opinion, of course. Um, we, <laughs> of course, 
uh, week one. Now, this is the, their quotes from, from Warren Carter. Uh, week one, buying a bottle of Adderall proved to be tougher than I imagined. It was sold out on their website almost immediately after coming back on the market. Some eBay sellers were asking $300 for just one bottle. That's too rich for me. I finally secured a few bottles at their regular price after waiting two long weeks for them to restock. About 30 minutes after taking my first pill, I felt the effects kick in. It started with a pleasant wave of calmness that washed over my entire body like a warm blanket. The mental fog and stress I'd been carrying around vanished instantly. Soon, I reached a level of alertness and concentration I'd never experienced before. Sounds didn't even register. It was like walking around on a winter day after it just snowed. It became easy for me to ignore distractions and outside noises. Best of all, there weren't any of the negative side effects like uh, I get when taking Adderall. Um, you guys know what Adderall is? No. Adderall is given to people with, uh, for a number of different reasons. One of them is high stress and that kind of thing. It's kind of a synthetic speed. Uh, it's also given to people that are hyperactive to dr- because it acts reverse on them to drop them to, <coughs> to a lower level. That's just, that's just one of one of the things. Um, so this is week two now. Um, Warren Carter says, I was a bit concerned about Adoram, uh, that, that it would stop working for me after one week. Not so. I'm feeling even more focused and energized than before. After a 10-hour workday, my energy levels were still high, and I was focused and determined to finish all tasks for the day. Adoram improved my ability to focus and function, and I made absolutely no change in my diet, exercise, or work schedule. My results came only from taking Adoram. Week three. The effects of Adoram are still with me, and I was pleased at how many uh, items on my to-do list were crossed off. Previously, I had problems starting and completing tasks. Adoram has me lesser focused on the job at hand, and I am suddenly able to get things done before I move on. Oh, excuse me, not lesser, laser focused. Uh, I noticed throughout the week I was hardly ever stressed, and I was able to control my emotions without losing focus. I expected to run out of steam around the third week due to my body getting used to the ingredients, but my energy levels haven't dipped at all. They remain steady for the day. And week four. I was given the nickname Superman at the office as I became most productive member of the staff. I gave all the credit to Adoram. The drug worked as well this week as it had in previous weeks. My mind is crystal clear. I'm able to recall stored memories with near-perfect accuracy it's unbelievable how much has changed in just four short weeks. It's not like I became a genius overnight after taking Adoram, but it's definitely improved my memory and the speed at which I process new information. In conclusion, uh, and this is the author of the article saying this, over the past four weeks, I found myself bouncing out of bed. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is still him. Uh, sometimes even before my alarm went off because I couldn't wait to take Adoram. Things that used to annoy me were no longer an issue. I hardly got stressed, and when I did, I was able to control my emotions and get back into peak performance mode. One thing I didn't expect was the euphoric feeling. There we are. There we are. I got while doing work on Adoram. As a result, I've enjoyed my work so much more, and my mood has greatly improved. In fact, my coworkers keep making fun of me for walking around with a permanent grin on my face. I've tried countless other smart drugs. But this is by far the closest thing to feeling like you are a guy from Limitless. What are your thoughts on that, you guys? I think it might work for Alzheimer's. I just turned around and looked at Stephanie and I said, I want some. <laughs> as, old, as old as I am, I need that. I think it might be a little much, though. Yeah. For Addictive. For somebody that's normal. Well, you, you know, did, did, you, did you hear a reoccurring theme in this? Like an addiction? Yeah, move yeah. the mic over more towards uh, your, your face there. Yeah, like an addiction? Yeah, may, maybe not physically, but at least the in thought and process. Yeah, I um, have to have Spiritually, it. too, being Superman. Yeah, and, and, and he talks a lot about, you know, he was stressed. Now he's not stressed. He was, he, he got, uh, he, he couldn't stay focused. Now he's focused. Um, things would distract him. Now he's not distracted. He has more energy. He didn't have energy. Now he has energy. It sounds and, like my addiction to the drug of my choice back in I the day. I know, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm thinking that's the whole. Re- that's some of the whole reasons I started 
popping cross tops. Right. Back in the day before we had, you know, methamphetamine and stuff like that. Yeah, me too. Because I was tired. I needed to stay focused. I needed to work. That's why truck drivers were taking speed. Yeah. You know, everybody. years ago, that was a big problem. De- De- Dexies or, you know, and then they mm-hmm. came out with the over the counter. Black beauties and all black that beauties stuff. Black beauties was all for that stuff. It wasn't because they wanted a party. All, some did. But mostly it was just all of what that guy was saying. All of yep. what that guy was saying. Now, is there anything wrong with that? I don't yes. know. Uh, but oh. <laughs> it, well, no. I, I'm just saying. I, I I don't know. I don't think it's been studied long enough. But 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 I'm kind of like you, Stephanie. I kind of think so. Mm-hmm. I I mean, are, are we once again looking for an artificial way to solve a problem that can be solved spiritually? And are we messing with God's creation? I mean. You know, there's something you were talking about, uh, Sandy, about at my age, you know, I right. need this. But there is some there's some truth to the fact that we're supposed to be kind of winding down. That's right. Mm-hmm. I know. It's kind of like the natural course of things. Oh. I know. I know. I'm going. Uh. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> um, uh, so, there's... the reason I didn't give the website out to where you can get the pill, I mean, you can find it. Just Google it if you wanted to do that. But, but I, I'm just not going to be somebody that's going to put my, you know, stamp of approval on it because I, I, I just. Something about it just scares the daylights out of me. Well, it, There's, go ahead, Sandy. it hasn't been studied for that long, and I think it's scary. Because your dependence on all that, think of how you're, the letdown would be when you stop taking it. Yeah. You'd be depressed beyond uh, belief. And, 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 There's a piece missing, mm. completely left out of it. I mean, part of it being an addiction is being self-centered. And number one and number two, what lengths are they going to to come up with the money or the finances to get this? And who are they stepping on to get where they're going? Because that's not the answer in the end. All that stuff goes away. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, where's the love? Good point. Really good point. Okay, I'm going to have you bring your microphone a little bit more towards you there. Sure. You actually want to hear me, huh? Oh, no. There you go. There you go. Watch out. My my mixer's misbehaving. Okay. Um, Yeah, that's, I think that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let us know what you guys think, listeners. I mean, do you think this is okay? I mean, is this something that you'd want want to do or try? Or are you kind of like me? You know, I had my fill of trying to enhance things artificially. I really have. I mean, I think the most I go now for is my coffee. Yeah, and it's it just goes back to all that stuff. Diet pills and antidepressants. And it's just, I don't know, it's kind of freaky. That. It's it's kind of sci-fi, you know? Yeah, it's scary. It really is. Well, listen, now we're going to take our first break, and when we come back, uh, we've got some uh, some holiday trivia for you. And <laughs> Sandy's rolling her eyes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, and then the, then the topic, why do we love to hate the holidays? Don't go away. We'll be right back. All right. Serene Scene Magazine is published for individuals who are seeking knowledge, support, and hope. Addiction is a systemic problem, and the content of Serene Scene reflects the complexity of putting addiction into remission, with special attention given to the loved ones of the addict. And now, here's Andrew Martin, Editor-in-Chief for Serene Scene. I'm Andrew Martin, creator of Serene Scene Magazine. The whole purpose of Serene Scene Magazine is to help people help themselves to a long-term quality lifestyle of recovery. Please have a look at some of the technological features that it has, the audio files and the video files that are incorporated into the publication as well. I hope you have fun with it and I hope there's something there for you. Serene Scene, a magazine for long-term healthy lifestyles of recovery. Visit www.serenescenemagazine.com and subscribe today. Choosing a facility for drug and alcohol rehabilitation treatment is an important decision. 
It should be a place where you will be comfortable and supported and one that is staffed, equipped, and programmed for successful outcomes. Introducing Free by the Sea, located on five acres of secluded waterfront property along the southwest Washington coast, away from big city distractions. The campus is a renovated resort property, so the grounds are lush and beautiful. Above all, the reason to choose Free by the Sea is the success rate of our counselors and staff in helping clients to transition to a life free from addiction. For more information or to schedule a visit, call 800-272-9199 or visit our website at freebythesea.com <coughs> Here we go I love Take 12 Trivia I know you love it too Oh, de- oh what the heck anyway It's time to play some holiday trivia with the Monty Man on Take 12 Trivia Ho oh, ho oh. All right. Oh, oh, oh. oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. I'm telling you. My mixer is acting really weird, you guys. I don't know what's... Okay. We'll see. That's better. All right. All right. <laughs> well, Tank 12 Trivia, we got little bells here. If you get the answer right, you get to hear that. <laughs> and if you get the hair ends wrong, you get to hear that. All right. Here we, here we go. <laughs> Uh my goodness. All right, number 1. What country was the uh was the first to use traditional Christmas trees? Was it A, Germany, B, Holland, or C, Poland? Germany. Germany. Germany, you guys are correct. Yay! 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 That was a good guess. Yeah. There you <laughs> Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Uh, number two, uh, which country has a tradition of a witch dropping gifts uh, to children through the chimney at Christmas? Was it France, Iran, or Italy? Italy. Italy? What do you say? I have no idea. I don't know. Iran sounds pretty like a pretty good suspect. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> well, celebrate. You gonna go with Iran? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's hand on the, uh, France, Paris. <laughs> no. I know, I already lost it. No, Sandy was correct. Oh, no. It is Italy. It is Italy. Really? Really? Yes, indeed. I'm just guessing. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to stick together on this. Number three, which American president banned Christmas trees in the White House? The only one to ever do this was it Abraham Lincoln? Theodore Roosevelt or Jimmy Carter? Theodore Roosevelt. What do you think there, Stephanie? Say Jimmy Carter, but let's go with Theodore Roosevelt. All right, you guys are correct. It was Theodore Just Roosevelt. Me. Wow. <laughs> You're very <laughs> good. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, okay, and here's your bonus. Uh, which Christmas songs all right, which Christmas song has sold more singles than any other holiday song? Here are your choices. Jingle Bells, White Christmas, or I'll Be Home for Christmas. I'll Be Home for Christmas. What do you say there, Stephanie? Why said Jingle Bells. I don't know. The White Christmas. You're going to say White Christmas? Well, you know, you had it kind of right. Because it was Bing Crosby that sang the song. But it's been sold in many different versions by different artists. But White Christmas is correct. It was White Christmas. That's what I was good yeah. at. So, Sandy, you get... Yeah. 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 So that does it for uh, Take 12 Trivia for this week. We'll be back right after this with the topic. Hello there. This is the Monty Man from Take 12 Radio. You know, men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to the struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Well, Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide that safe and powerful healing environment. Therapia is a Greek word for healing. Traditionally, classic Greek medicine was holistic, It viewed the mind and body as one. At Therapia Addiction Healing Center, they have developed a holistic healing approach to 
treating addiction that is designed to bring into balance the mind, body, and the spirit. For more information, visit www.therapia.com. That's www.therapia.com. Therapia Addiction Healing Center. Helping people recover from addictions by developing and maintaining healthy, meaningful relationships with God, self, and others. Hey guys, this is Richie Supa, and you are listening to Take12Radio.com, recovery talk and positive music. Yes. Welcome back. <clears throat> Thank you, Richie Supa. Richie Supa, rockers and recovery guy, also uh, sang with Aerosmith for a number of years. Um, and has been on the show before. Hey, listen, uh, coming up in January, this is really cool. He's been on the show a couple of times. Um, he is just an amazing man. He's a screenwriter. His name is William Borchert. William Borchert is the author and screenwriter of the movie My Name is Bill W. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. He also wrote um, When Love is Not Enough, the Lois Wilson story, which was on the Hallmark Channel a couple years ago. He was the writer of Serpico. Dog Day Afternoon, uh, Bay City Rollers, and a host of other goodies. And uh, he and his wife were close friends with Lois Wilson. And uh, he's come out with a new book called How I Became My Father, a Drunk. And this is William's actual personal story of experience, strength, and hope. And he's going to be on the show. I'm going to look over here for a minute. On the 8th of January, his show will broadcast. Uh, so be looking forward to that. He's just he's just a heck of a nice guy, and um, I'm just gonna gonna read the forward by James Wood, the actor that played Bill W. Uh, he says, "I want to congratulate my good friend Bill Borchard for writing another courageous story that will help many people, especially families, find their way out of the pain and confusion caused by addiction to alcohol." I was uh, proud to work with Bill when we made a movie together called My Name is Bill W. It was the start of Bill's attempt to help alcoholics find their way to recovery. I'm especially pleased with his new book since it will help so many. Bravo, my friend, James Wood. Uh, so I, I just, I, I really encourage you, if if you'd like to, and I think I may have this here, uh, if you'd like to get your copy of the book before the show, you can go to his website at williamborchert.com. That's W-I-L-L-I-A-M-B-O-R-C-H-E-R-T.com uh, under Books and Movies to find out more information about the book. Or you can go directly to Amazon.com to check out How I Became My Father a Drunk. Fun stuff. <clears throat> All righty. Um. This can be a really painful time, uh, not just for people in recovery, although that's who we're going to be talking about today, but, but for all sorts of people. And um, I, I just want to give a shout out to a gal. I, I'm not going to mention her name just because I want to, I want to respect her privacy. Um, but she's gone through a heck of a time, and, and I know a lot of you can identify with this. Uh, she... She has loved ones in her life, one particularly that is suffering from alcoholism to the degree that who knows how long the guy's got to live. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just terrible. Um, she's also one of these people that has nothing to give her kids at Christmas. Um, a, a, another gal, same situation, emailed me the other day, and I said, you know... I know this may not be of great comfort to you, I said, but try to put it in your in your thought process, not your feeling process, just knowing the truth. Because sometimes the truth doesn't feel real good, but the truth is the truth. Facts change. Truth doesn't. Um, and that is that you're healthy today and your kids have you. And that's the greatest gift you can give them is you. They need you. They want you. Because when the toys are broke, when the money runs out, when the vacations are over, do they have you? You know. Um, so for all of those of you out there 
that find this very difficult time. Maybe you're angry. Maybe you're, you know, you're ticked at God. Maybe you're ticked at the one you lost. Maybe you're ticked at yourself. Maybe you're just sad. Um, there's nothing that we can say that is going to cheer you up and make it all okay. But we know a God who is all powerful. He's the great physician. And I'm telling you, um, when, when all is said and done, he'll never leave you or forsake you. He will not. And it is in the midst of the storm that we find our creator uh, so many times. And, and may I just say that, that many times it's the struggle that brings us strength. Um, again, not real comforting words when you're in the middle of it. Uh, but it's the truth. It, it, it really is. But we get it. This is this is a, a rough time for people. And in in the next uh, couple of weeks, as we broadcast this show, I'm going to be giving some some tips on on how to get through the holidays. Um, but this is from um, our friends at uh, the Twelve Step Gazette. Uh, they're one of our sponsors here on the show. And you can visit their website at www.twelvestepgazette.com. Um. It says, to put it simply, holidays are just too much drama for some folks, right? <laughs> oh, amen. Yeah. Between the mix of family, money, problems, parties, exhaustion, and temptation, these things could lead anyone to the nearest coping mechanism. The holidays can be stressful to the most together person, and here we are trying to keep it all together. Uh, I know we all have had the thought of staying away from family on the holidays, but who really are we hurting? Our families are proud of our sober lifestyle and look forward to spending these cherished times with us. Granted, holidays are tough, but if we are prepared, we can get through them sober. Listed below are some tips to avoid temptation during the holiday season. Now, don't get me wrong. We know that you can't always avoid temptation. We know that in the program, in the direction manual of Alcoholics Anonymous, for instance, um... We have to come to a place where if temptation is thrown in front of us, we're okay and we can stay sober. You know, I had to come to a place where I could walk down the vegetable aisle at the store and could get my veggies and my fruit, you know, even though the beer counter was directly across from it. Now, day one, I couldn't do that, but I had to come to a place in my recovery where I could do that. So we're not suggesting that you you lock yourself up in your house and don't go out because there's temptation all over the place. But having said that, here's number one. And as I, there's six of these, and I'll let you guys comment on them, Sandy and, and Stephanie. Uh, be prepared. You will probably be asked some uncomfortable questions and the awkward family situations you could encounter. Think through your responses in advance and come up with alternative plans to avoid difficult situations and people you don't want to see. Uh, this will reduce your anxiety and give you confidence that you can manage these events. Um, and, and so, again, we're not saying that you can avoid everybody and or that, nor that you should, but there are some people that are toxic that you may want to definitely stay away from during a high-stress time. Um, so be prepared to encounter uncomfortable situations is a good idea. So, you guys, I'll let you guys comment on that one. I had a lot of toxic situations with my family when I first got sober and um, because of the fact that they all drank a lot. Mm. And in my early recovery, since it helped because they were out of town, out yeah. of state, um, I chose not to go there for the simple reason that I was afraid to. And um, family, sober or drunk, can always push buttons. But once I got into my recovery and got um, knew that I had a God in between me and that drink I might take, I was a lot more comfortable and could do that. Yeah. But not at first. Right. Not at first, not in the early days. No. What about you, Stephanie? And well, exactly like Sandy said, and then adding to it, um, like even with the last holiday season, I am early in it, and... It's weird because I could remove the um, alcohol 
however, the problem still there, the underlying issues and it's emotional stuff that gets me uncomfortable. I don't mind being happy. I don't mind all that great stuff, but for some reason, family, I have a tenderness. I'm weak, you know, but I found strength in realizing that I have another family who has my back and they go through it too. An yeah. understanding. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it gives me strength. Good point. Uh, here's number two, manage your stress. Well, I could always take the pill out of them, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you could. Um, manage your stress. The holiday season brings unlimited opportunities for more stress. Make sure you take time for the activities that help you calm down and unwind. Uh, take a walk. Go skiing or snowboarding. Listen to music. Go to the gym. Read a book or take a nap. Take a nap. Wow, what a concept. Yeah. You know, we live in a society that demands our attention constantly. And if we don't give it to it, it's, it suggests that we're lazy and don't care. And let me tell you, bunk. Right? Right. So how do you manage your stress? Um, okay. Stephanie, you want to start? Sure. Um, actually, a little bit of stress isn't so bad. But it's amazing what you just said. Managing my stress has come to a point where... I literally let go. It's the weirdest thing. I had a, a new friend give me a quote that said, be still and wait upon the Lord. And the weirdest thing in the whole world is that was one of my biggest obstacles, being still, bored, just sitting there. Wow. And that's when I would definitely want to like, you know, because I would start thinking, obsessing and things like that. I'm able to do that now. I mean, it is just an amazing freedom. I'm Okay. With that. Just being still. Just being still for a minute and just waiting. Yeah. It feels weird at first, but now I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying out of jail and prisons and everything. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so simple. Just... I was always afraid that I was going to fall asleep while waiting. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it still keeps you out of trouble. But see, it says take a nap. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but how about you, Sandy? How do you manage your stress levels? you take time for Sandy? I didn't used to. I was the kind of person that thought that I had to be everywhere, everybody's everything. It was my responsibility to make everybody happy. Mm. And uh, and so I was always bat, you know what, crazy. And uh, Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And I still have a problem with feeling responsible for everybody out there's happiness but you know like stephanie said you just you just have to kick back and breathe that's what my first sponsor used to tell me are you breathing have you eaten <laughs> you know when was the last You're time breathing. you ate are you breathing are you praying uh basic simple yeah halt yeah hungry angry lonely and tired yeah. Which, by the way, is what spurred on the call letters for this station, KHLT. Wow. Uh, K is West Coast, W is East Coast for radio. Uh, and we're short the A, but HALT was K-HALT, basically. Wow. Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm really tired. Um, you know, one of the things, and, and my mother-in-law did this a lot, bless her heart. She was one of the kindest, most generous people I've ever met in my life. Uh, she went home to be with the Lord a few years ago. Um, but she... She was like that. She she would like, okay, so if I spend $20 on this grandchild, then I have to spend $20 on this grandchild. And we should tell her, no, you don't. Who who made that rule? How I, They don't know the price anyway. I mean, you, you know, and they're little and they're, you, you know. But but if somebody got this, then the, all the other relatives had to get this. And then she was so wrapped up in that it was her, her job to make sure that everybody was balanced. And I will tell you, for the most part, uh, uh, other than a couple of her, just a couple of her kids, she had a lot of kids. Um, for the most part, they didn't appreciate her Amen. anyway. Yeah, they didn't anyway. That's sad. You know, and it was like you know you don't have to do this, mom. Chill out, because every year she go, oh, I just can't make another turkey. I'm just, then don't. <laughs> right. That's right. You know, go to Subway. <laughs> Or whatever. You don't have to do this. Uh, so, but I know that's, you know, and let's face it. You know, one of, the, one of the reasons that we love to give is so we feel good. 
Right. 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 It, it may be kind of a righteous selfishness, but it comes back to us again. And we, the big book talks about that, you know, in in, in uh, the whole idea about, you know, the control freak, basically. Yeah. You know, we can be mean and angry and nasty, or we can be generous and kind. And, and you know, but behind it all <laughs> is self again. Mm. So when was the last time you gave just for the sake of giving? With no expectations. That's hard because it's our natural inclination to say, you know, I really don't expect anything back. But in the back of our mind, we go, man, it sure would be nice. Right. Right? We wouldn't be human. Here's number three. Um, And some some may disagree with this. Avoid high-risk situations. There are some places, people and things, that need to be avoided if you want to dodge the temptation to use drugs and alcohol. Now, I'm not a big proponent of the the triggers idea. I, I, I understand there are triggers um, when you're new, but there's triggers constantly all the time. And so at some point in your recovery, you need to be able to walk through some of those because you're going to come around a corner one of these days and the dope man's going to be there. Um, but during high stress times of year, it may be a good idea to really recognize some of those old playgrounds and, and you know, there's a street in Portland, Oregon. I just don't go down it. It doesn't do, and now it makes me, makes me almost want to throw up. Wow. You know, um, and not because I'm afraid of using, I just don't want to feel like throwing up. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh. But don't be guided by pride, assuming you can master your cravings. Maybe you can't right now. Don't think you can. You know, I've I've gone to 14 meetings this week. I can master my cravings. Well, if you haven't done any step work, you probably aren't going to be able to. And even if you have, you really want to risk that? So what do you think about that? Avoiding, Avoiding dangerous places, particularly during the holidays. Honestly, the most dangerous place I can be in the holidays is stuck in my own head. Ooh. <laughs> That's honestly the truth. But you're there, though. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, if I get stuck there and my perspective changes or I lose hope of any sort, I'm in trouble and I know it. Yeah. And then I need to do something about it right away. It's almost like I want to play God and be like, I'm well now. Let me take this back. And that's a no-no. Living in humility and being a servant is like my thing. It's good. Business is good. <laughs> in 3D and the color. Truth. In 3D and color, yeah. <laughs> hey, I like working for God. <laughs> so, so what about you, Sandy? I mean, you know, what would you tell somebody? I mean, I, I, because there are people, right? They go, you know, well, I got my buddy. I want to go give him a Christmas present, and, and you're like, he's still drinking. I, <laughs> I feel that there are places that I don't need to be, even after. Sure. A lot of years in the program, and I don't choose to go to places that it's not so much that it would trigger, well, it could, but it's not so much that it would trigger me, it's just some place I choose not to be, like in a bar, you know. But there are times when you're invited to Christmas parties where you work and those kind of things, and, mm-hmm. and there's steps you can take to, you know prevent uncomfortable things to happen. Sure. You know, have a glass of water in your hand or seven up or whatever. But I you know, you don't go to the dope man's house, you don't go to the booze man's bar. Right. If you don't want to use or drink. So yeah, I I've always been careful about where I go. I I used I used to say, tell people when they say, Well I like to play pool. We've all heard that one, right? Yeah. I like to play karaoke. pool. Karaoke. And there's no pool. Yeah, karaoke. I like to do karaoke and I said, well, number one, you know, uh, especially at this early stage in your recovery, is it vital that you play pool? I mean, is this something that is, you know, that is a necessity in your life today? Yeah. Uh, is it vital that you do karaoke? I mean, I enjoy doing a lot of things. Um, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed backpacking, but it probably isn't safe for me with the way my back is and everything to go do that. So I don't do that. I do other things now. Um and, but people would say that, you know, I like to go gambling. I don't have gambling addiction. I have an alcohol addiction. But I like to go gambling. And there's a lot of booze there and everything else. Um, and so I told this one guy, I said, I said, okay, so you like to play pool. And there's only one pool house in town. And it's a, kind of a scuzzy looking bar. And so, um, 
you're a meth head too, right? Yeah. So would you go play pool in a shooting gallery where they were slamming dope? Because that was the only place that had a pool table? Well, no. I go, well, then how is it different? I don't know, you know, but maybe I'm being too legalistic. No, no you don't no, think so? No, it's like planting a seed, even if they can withstand. This is my experience. Yeah. Like, because in the past when I tried, I went in thinking, oh, yeah, I'm strong. Like you said, you yeah. go around them. And, but then I go home and I come back the next time. Well, you know, just a little. It's just like grows like a weed. Right? Yeah. And then it takes that poison to put it out, you know. Yeah, getting yeah, sick and yeah. going through it. Yeah, you leave that door open just to crack. Smack. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, number four, and this kind of goes back to what you were saying, uh, uh, Stephanie. Don't isolate yourself. Don't isolate yourself. You're talking about being alone in your head. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, for many of the holidays can be a time of loneliness and depression. Yes. That drive us deeper into not even getting out of our chair. Yes. Um, keep busy. And be with other people. Reach out to long lost friends or go to, uh, to to meetings for events in your area. You can go to meetup.com. Um, and there's all sorts of holiday events in, in, in your area, depending on where you are in the United States. You can also invite some friends over, go to a movie, volunteer to help out, or go online to find events of people in recovery, such as AA or, or NA meetings. Um, one of the things that I love to do every year is we have a church here in town that's kind of the community church, and that's Albany First Assembly. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the holiday times, I always put on a Christmas program. They always have a full orchestra and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's kind of cheesy. Sometimes it's really well done. But we always go. We don't go to church there. We go somewhere else. But we always go. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a tradition. Traditions happen when you make practice of it over and over again wow. so if you've never had a tradition during the holidays make i don't care what it is just do it right you, that sounds like fun yeah actually. yeah it's a lot of fun and it's free yeah. you know um so it, 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 have you ever found yourselves i'll start with sandy for it ever found yourself during the holiday times isolating oh yeah especially early on yeah um, I just always used to think that everybody else was happy, and I wasn't. Mm. Everybody else is enjoying this Christmas, and I'm not. And yeah. I, and I would just sit at home by myself. And uh, fortunately, I had people, sponsor, that would push me out, get me going, drag me to a women's meeting or something. But it's a lot easier, I think, to be by yourself. It's just just once you're there you just don't get up and go it's kind of a form of the easier softer way right? yeah yeah I just let me sit here with my book and the tv and and i don't have to worry but but that's a form of depression and and it's a trigger and it's just a lot of things that aren't good for you so i really try to get out and, there and if you're gonna sit at home and watch tv during the holidays don't rent krampus <laughs> You know, you know, that? it's a horror movie about the the bad side of Santa um, punishing oh God, little, never heard of that. punishing Good little thing. kids. Yeah, there's two versions. There's a Krampus and there's a Krampus. One's in the theaters and one's on Redbox. But don't do that. No. Oh my God. Watch some Hallmark Christmas shows or yeah. something. But don't do that. Um, what about what about you, Stephanie? About isolation. You ever found yourself doing that? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was gone for several years. I'm just back in life now yeah um the isolating thing is exactly like sandy said too it's weird because we were just talking earlier about um you know expectations yeah and so and giving and getting and stuff like that well i've noticed that when i give and i don't expect it feels so good and you know if it i'm wor worried about like say it, whether it was oh gosh am i gonna have enough of this or that it comes around but not from the person i gave it to but from somebody else usually and it's even cooler so it's kind of like getting multiplied as it goes around the rainbow <laughs> to the pot of gold Woo! you know i think one of the reasons it feels so good to give and this isn't this isn't something I came up with. Again, I'm not that smart, but but uh, Pastor Kelly out at Oak Creek mentioned this yesterday, and I thought, wow, I never thought of that. Um, isn't isn't always because we're selfish and want to feel good, but part of it is if we are indeed made in the image of God, 
and God loves to give to his kids. Yeah. He loves to do that. Then we have a part of that in us. It's just in us. It, there's something about it, you know, isn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm finding myself um, not really too concerned about what I get at Christmas time anymore. But I want to make sure my kids, and not the codependent way, but just I want them to enjoy it. I mean, the, the, and I think God's like that. He wants to give to his kids. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think that's part of who we are. Uh, number five, find some support. Wow, that's that's really, really, really big. Always have someone to call if you start feeling down or your craving uh or your cravings to use start to grow addiction is too powerful to fight alone everyone needs help so if you don't have a sponsor and you're listening to this show at the very least find at least one person in your 12 step support meeting in your church in your synagogue whatever wherever you do any kind of fellowship if you're if you're fellowshipping at all Chances are you are if you're listening to this show. And give somebody permission to call you on your stuff yeah. if they think you're going off the, the rails. Just just one person, Great at least idea. for now. Right. Great idea. Right? Find some support. Yeah. You, 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 this is not something we – this is not a spectator sport. We have to be involved <laughs> with people, right? Gee whiz. So have you done that before, though? Have you, have you not had support and then went, man. Oh, yeah. I should have I should have been. I should have called them. How many times have we said that, right? I should have called somebody. I should have called somebody. Yep. Um, 14 years, remember? 14, 14 years. To pick yeah. up that phone. Wow. <laughs> wow. Boy, it sure made a difference, too. Uh, and number six, discover inner peace. Now, that sounds really simplistic. It isn't necessarily. (laughs) A critical part of self-care is looking after your own spiritual needs. Reflect on all that you are grateful for. It's one of the things I have my sponsees do right off the bat, right when I first start working with them after we've counted the cost. (laughs) Because after we count the cost, they may not want to work with me. I have them write down a gratitude list. and I'm a little kind of hard-nosed on this. I, I say I want 30 things that you are grateful for and they cannot be associated with each other. Whoa! A little twist to that. Now, now, if they don't come up with well, here's a little secret, and I'm going to give it away. But if they don't come up with 30 things, I get it. But you always want to ask for more. I learned that when I was in high school. Dad, can I borrow twenty dollars? I only needed five. <laughs> and he go, "Well, now I'll give you ten. And I'm like, "Yes!" Oh, wow. So ask your sponsors for a little more, and they'll they'll do it. So usually they, they come up with 15 or 16, and then they kind of get stomped. And I'm like, you know, that's a great number. you got 16 things that you're grateful for, and they're not associated with each other. So you can't say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for God in my life, and then say, I'm thankful for what Jesus did for me. It, it, no, it's too associated. I'm thankful for my home group, and then say, I'm thankful for the fellowship. No, it's too associated. So one of the most craziest things I ever heard somebody say, but it made so much sense, was he said, I'm thankful for peanut butter. (laughs) Because he lived on peanut butter on the streets for like three years. Oh, my gosh. And his gratitude for having peanut butter. And so that's what he that was like number one on his list. (laughs) That's amazing. So find things you're 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 grateful for. Um, Then count your blessings. Count them. Uh, Think about your purpose in life and pray for strength and guidance with careful planning. You can enjoy the holidays and disappoint your addiction. Oh, I like that with careful planning. And so that goes back to number one, be prepared, right? It's okay to disappoint your addiction. It's really okay. It's no friend of yours. (laughs) No, right. Um, happy holidays and best wishes for the new year. So, what do you guys do to get by yourself and get some inner peace and just kind of, and I'm not talking about happiness now. Happiness is based on our happenings. It's overrated. It's great when our happenings come together and we're happy, but happiness is something that's very, very superficial and it's based on what's going on around us. Can we have inner peace even when we're not happy? Yes, absolutely. 
It's really important, isn't it? It's, yeah. Yeah. And it all goes back to that expectation thing, I think. Yes. If you expect, if your expectations are way out there. Yeah. And it doesn't happen, you know, I, I just try to sit and be quiet and realize that I really don't have anything I have to have that I need right now, you know, as far as material things or whatever. I just need to feel good inside. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just take a quiet time. And you were saying that, too, that you take quiet time. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. And when you don't have expectations, then, then it's really everything beautiful. you get, you're, like, grateful for, you know? Right. Yeah. Everything, even, like, someone walking up. That's my goal, too, by the way, what my gift is for all you guys. You guys, too. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a million dollars hate to tell you, Monty Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a hug? Exactly. My like gift that. is to put out love, like, love is patient, love is kind to my family and try to work it. Yeah. Best yeah. I can this Christmas because I don't have like I, don't I hit bottom by the way. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't have it either, so that's just the way it is. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but you know what you do have? You do have that that action of when your phone rings, picking it up and saying, "Hello." Yep. I'm right here. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. awesome. That's awesome. We're gonna switch gears a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to share with you something that I feel that, that that was a gift God gave me. I, I do a lot of self-reflection around the holidays. Um, not morbid self-reflection, but just looking at my my, my life and realizing that, that there is, and I think everybody does this to a certain degree at some time during the year, and some people do it more times during during certain parts of years than others. Mine happens to come around the holidays. Um. Um, I have some friends that I've lost contact with um, because life's gotten busy. And they are, one one in particular, uh, his name's J.D. And uh, we were best buddies back in high school days. We went to Japan together for the 13th World Jamboree of the Boy Scouts of America. That's where we met. We stayed friends. Um, and if you had told me that our lives would go in different directions and we would probably not stay in touch back in those days, I would have told you that is, there's no way it's going to happen. Right? Um, and uh, nostalgia. This is called nostalgia. And this is kind of, was inspired by the memory of my friend. Now, he's still around and we talk to each other about once every seven years. <laughs> um <laughs> But when I think about my past, and, and some people say, well, this poem's kind of depressing. No, I don't want you to look at it like that. This is just a realization of who I am, what I've been through. And if you're having struggles during the holidays, write something like that down. You know, And you don't have to leave out the sad parts. Mm-mm. You know, but include... The parts that, you know, have been really, really good, too. Take an inventory of it all. And this is this poem does that. So this is called Nostalgia, uh, inspired by my friend J.D. Simpson, if he's listening. Uh, check this out, and we're going to close out with this. Thanks, you guys, for doing the show. Oh, thank you thank for you having so us. Much. All right, here it is. Nostalgia by Monty Dale Maya. As I ponder past days gone by, I also mourn the disconnect that time, distance, and worldly clamors have placed between us. If someone had told me years ago there would be such a wide gap between friendships, I would have assured them that would never be. But as we grow older and the days slip away, it seems inevitable that bonds of youth begin to loosen and life assigns new chapters to its pages as an emotional creature I cherish the faded memories of old and grieve the hurts that some of those memories stir within me I repent and turn from past behaviors and in my attempt to abandon them to the grave of remorse I find myself only wishing for the impossible 
the opportunity to have a second chance. Nostalgia? You're an interesting maiden as you swoop in to cheer me up and then seek to tear me down. You smell of light from the past, but threaten to snuff it out. You rub your hands against my thoughts as the cloth against the genie's lamp, summoning the miracle of wishes to appear. You speak to me of laughter and empty me of pain. Then remind me of past mistakes and caress me with guilt. You free me from the self-defeating thoughts that would end my existence, but then remind me never to forget. <laughs> Paintings made, drawings given, songs sung and music written all share the stories of my life. Awards presented, goals accomplished, cheering sections and congratulations all in an abundance all through time but never quite enough. So these thoughts I ponder become like rocks filling the pockets of a dead man's coat as he rises to the surface of his life quite down river from his dreams. They hunt me with silent scorn, assure me with a new life born, but always there to pin me to the wall. All in all, my life's been good bloody yes but very very good an archer's aim always falling short but effort given repeatedly to hit the mark i've asked forgiveness and moved on yet always following close in step is you nostalgia with your prodding cheerful smile of deceit and yet with a strange and welcomed loyalty I try and shake her, but she still comes, everlasting, ever-pressing, pressing me to remember. So, as I ponder past days gone by, I also mourn the disconnect that time, distance, and worldly clamors have placed between us. For today, I miss you, and I wanted you to know that when I close my eyes, I see your smile, I hear your voice, and I am grateful for the time we had and the memories Lady Nostalgia never lets me forget. This is Stephanie H., Sandy W., and the Monty Man, ever wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs>